Hey guys, how are you doing? So this is going to be a short video uh, in order to to see some examples how we make uh, the electron configuration of an atom and to give you some more notes. So, some more theory. This is, I just explained it in more detail what uh, I said in the previous video. Let me repeat it again. We saw that the subsol 4s has a lower energy than subsol 3d. Therefore, according to the principle of the lowest energy, during electron configuration of atoms, we'll fill 4s first and 3d after. But the 4s, as the 4s is filled, and we start placing electrons, no, I'm sorry, but when the 4s is filled and we start placing electrons in the 3d, the repulsions between the electrons change, and the subcell 3d gains less lower energy than subcell 4s. Therefore, the energy, the total energy of the 4s becomes higher than that of the 3d. Okay, I apologize for my dog. Anyway, now, what happens when we have a half field and a field D subcells? D with 5 electrons and D with 10 electrons. The atom has the maximum stability. That is the lowest energy. And you know, always, always nature wants to have the maximum stability and the lowest energy. So we are going to see that later, just keep it in mind. Now let's talk about noble gases. You should know them, one, two, three, four, five. You should know the first five of them, helium, helium, neon, argon, krypton and xenon. Okay, so you should know them. Now, noble gases have in the outer cell the following electron configuration, NS2, MP6. That is, for the neon, it's in the second row of the periodic table, therefore it has the, the outer cell configuration, NS2, S2, 2P6, argon, 3S2, 3P6, krypton, 4S2, 4P6, and xenon, 4S2, 4P6, in the outer cell. Now, if I had an element after helium, Helium has an electron configuration 2s1s2. S2. If I had any, an electron after helium, I would write 1s2 and then 2s1. The next element has one more electron, therefore has 2s1. But instead of that, I could write that. I could put the helium into these parentheses and then write the more, the additional electrons of the atom. For instance, with here, with that example, we got 2s2, 2p3, that is 5 more electrons than helium that are arranged in that way. Okay? Now, what, which one is the outer cell? It's the cell with the greatest n number which has the electrons. It always, it can have a maximum of 8 electrons, with the exception of the first cell, the K cell, which can have a maximum of 2 electrons. And now let's start with some examples. First of all, sodium. First, we write this thing. All right, then we we'll look at that. This is the atomic number, and it shows us how many protons it has on the nucleus. We see that it has 11 protons, and since it is a neutral atom, it must have 11 electrons. So we, I need to make an electron configuration with 11 electrons. So I start with this here. First of all, 1s, how many it can take? The s holds up to 2. Therefore, it can take 2 electrons. I put 2. I write that down. 1s2. Then, this arrow, I go to the next arrow here. Mm -hmm. 2s2. 2s, I'm sorry. How many electrons can take? 2 electrons. How many electrons have I put in total? 2 plus 2, 4 electrons. 11 minus 4, I got, f I got 7 more electrons to place. So I keep going. 2s, then I go 2p. All right. 2p can take up to 6 electrons. How many electrons I have to place? Um, 7. Therefore, I place all, all the 6 electrons. I fill the 2p orbital. 2p subcell, I'm sorry. And then I get how many left? 1. 
I continue after the 2p goes the 3s and I put one electron on the 3s and I write the following configuration and this is the electron configuration of the sodium. Next one. Phosphorus. Phosphorus has an atomic number of 15 therefore I start putting electrons. So we got 1s2 then 2s2 2p6 and until here you should remember that that filling the first and the second shell we got a total of 10 electrons so how many I got 15 minus 10 I got five more to place so I keep I done with that that it's off therefore after I follow this oh oops 3s how many it can take the 3s 2 5 minus 2 equals 3 therefore this is off no, I'm sorry, I write 3s2 and this is off. And then I follow it uh, uh -huh, here, 3p. How many I got left? 3, the p can take 6 electrons. So it, it can take all 3 of my electrons left. Therefore I got 3p3. And if I can write the orbitals here, if you remember the subcell 3p has 3 orbitals. One, two, three. And just to remind you of the Hund's rule, I want to show the electrons in these orbitals. Let's say I place the first one here, then all the next one must be placed in different orbitals, Ma I'm sorry, must have the same, um, preferably, must have the same spin. Therefore, I cannot place the next one here, because in the same orbital, the two electrons can, must have opposite spins. Therefore, it cannot go here, it will go here, so the second and the third one. Now, why did you put an upward spin? No reason. It could easily have this electron configuration and would be equally correct. Alright, that's all. Let's move on now with sulfur. Sulfur has one more electron than phosphorus, so it's 3p4. Now let me show you the 3p4 orbital here. I got the 3p subcell has three orbitals, one, two, three, and I got four electrons. So let's say I, the first one is placed with an upward spin, all right, then the second one must be placed with an upward spin and the third one must be placed with an upward spin and then I cannot place any more with an upward spin therefore I must change into a downward spin let's change it here all right now this is not is this correct I'm asking you is this correct I will give you just two examples here and you should identify which one is correct and which is not Give me a second. Let's start with this one. Is this correct? Yes, because it started with the first one here. It was with a downward spin, the second and the third one with a downward spin. And then the fourth one, we didn't have any other choice. We must put it with an upward spin. All right, so this is correct. Is this correct? The first one starts with an upward spin. Then I put this with an upward spin. What, what on earth is that? So this is not correct. This should be upwards or this should be downwards. All right. And then argon. Argon has... Let's make it... Um, let me change the color. Let's put... I don't know... Magenta, okay. So argon has an atomic number of 18. That means it has 18... Um, 18 protons in the nucleus so we must put so it must have 18 electrons as well in order to be neutral in order to have no charge all right so I start with the 1s it can take up to two electrons so 1s2 then 2s 2s2 it can take two then 2p it can take up to six I fill it and until here I have put in 10 electrons. How many am left? I got 8 left. 
So I'm the 2p, after that 3s, it can take up to 2 electrons, therefore 3s2, and then 3p, it can take minus 2, I get left of 6. Therefore, I'm, I'm left in total to fill the 3p. This, its outer cell, it's the cell with, uh, with the greatest n value. The greatest n value here is the 3, therefore this is the outer cell. And the outer cell has an electronic configuration of 3s2, 3p6. No, I shouldn't write it this way. Anyway, 3p6 or n s, I'm sorry, or n s2, n p6. Therefore, this is what? A noble gas. Because it has this electron configuration on its outer cell. Alright. And then let's see bromine. So bromine has 35. Alright. 1s. It can take up to 2 electrons. I put them in. 2s, 2. 2p can take 6, therefore I'm filled until here, I have put it in, how many? 10, therefore I got 25 more to put. Alright, so then, after the 2p goes the 3s, it takes 2, after the 3s, the 3p would take 6, so 25 minus 2. 2 minus 6 minus 8 gives me 17. So after the 3p, I go to fill the 4s. I write here, I go to write the 4s. How many electrons does it have? It can take up to 2, therefore 17 minus 2, I'm left with 15. I'm sorry, 15 here. Okay, after the 4s, I go to fill the 3d, but since it has a lowest energy level after it puts electron, I'm writing it behind the 4s. Therefore, 3d, I got 15 left. The d can take up to 10 electrons. There, I'm filling it with 10 electrons, and I got 5 left. After the 3d, I fill the 4p and I put the five remaining electrons. So I could write the electron configuration of bromine like that. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2, 4p6. Or I could write that. Argon, 3d10, 4s2, 4p6. And we saw in the previous slide that this is the electron configuration of argon. Therefore, instead of that, I can just write that. We saw that previously. Okay. And last but not least, a very important one, and let me draw your attention here, to always remember that, is chromium. I told you, and remember that for now, that the half field and the field D subcells have the maximum stability, the lowest energy, and always the systems on Earth want to achieve the maximum stability and the lowest energy. So let me make the electron configuration for chromium. First of all, one it has 24, therefore I must put 24 electrons. 1s, 2, 2s, 2, 2p6, okay with that. Until here I got put 10, therefore I have 14 left now. All right, and I'm here, I filled the 2p. After that, I go to fill the 3s. Okay, the 3s has how much? It can take two. Okay, I fill it. I, I have there for minus two, and I got a remaining of 12. After the 3s, I go to fill the 3p. It can take six, 12 minus six. 12 minus six. I got 6 left, alright, after the 3p I go to fill the 4s, the 4s takes 2, 6 minus 2, it gives me 4, okay, 
and therefore after the 4s I got to put those remaining 4 in the 3d therefore I got this electron configuration right now 3d4 4s2 but this With a little change in electrons, I can have a more stable configuration. That is, if that happens, and if I write that down, and I see a d4, that means I'm very, very close to a d5, a half-filled d subcell. And therefore, since if I put d5, I will have a much more stable electron configuration, that's what I'm doing. I take one electron from the promise, and I move it here to have a 3d5 and 4s1 and this is this I'm sorry this right here is the correct electron configuration for chromium I repeat this is the correct electron configuration of chromium 3d5 4s1 not 3d4 for s2 actually there is it's a, mar a much more complicated explanation where that happens but what you need to understand is that it has to do with stability and energy so in order to have the maximum stability I prefer to have a half filled D so for instance if I have the element let me write here if I had the element with this subcell, which has, I don't remember which element is right now, but it had a 3d9 and fRS2, if I would write that electron configuration, that would be incorrect. The correct electron configuration would be that 3d10 and 4s1 in order to achieve the maximum stability this is a field a fully filled d subcell and therefore i prefer it than the d9 and the system nature prefers it that way and therefore this is what the atoms do they follow precisely the orders of nature now i'm going to end this video right now there's nothing more i can tell i can tell you there are hundreds of examples for you to do so I'm going to put to upload a file in the description below and this way you can you can practice more on that uh, it won't have solutions it will be just questions questions and questions and I won't upload solutions so in case you are not sure about the question what the answer is um, just email me and I will answer to you what's the correct answer to this question. Okay, thank you guys. Bye-bye.